Troy from Ace Appliance in Toledo, Ohio. Welcome back to another in-home diagnostic video brought to you by appliancevideo.com. Today what we're looking at is a Whirlpool washing machine. Uh, it's a top load direct drive unit. What the customer's situation is is that they're not getting any spin. So first thing I'm gonna do is advance the timer to spin, start the unit. You can hear that the motor is on. It's making a little rattling noise. It could be more pronounced than that. That rattling right noise uh, typically is um, your drive coupling is broke, the plastic prongs in it have broken off and what you need to do is uh, remove the case, remove the cover, remove the motor, the pump and you'll be able to then be able to get at the coupling. So what I'm going to first do is unplug the unit and remove the top. You unplug the unit from the wall. On this particular model there's two screws, one on each side in the back that you would take all the way out. Once you remove those screws, you can pull forward a little bit and then up on this back panel and it flips right up for you. So you can access the power and the clips holding the top on. So unplug the power, flip your top back up and over. Today for the repair, what you will need is either a quarter inch nut driver or drill with attachment, your Phillips head screwdriver, a flashlight potentially, an extension, uh, a, a, a uh, ratchet extension, and some sort of blunt force uh, instrument. Once that's out of the way, you're going to have two clips holding the case on and you're going to have a lid switch. Unplug your lid switch, use a long screwdriver, remove the tabs. Once those tabs have been removed, you're now able to take the front of the unit, grab it by the cover, tilt it forward a little bit. Once you've tilted it forward, it slides out from underneath the front of the unit. Slide it out and remove it from your way. Once you remove the case, there's two little clips holding the pump on. You basically pull them off. Once you have them pulled off, you twist them and they come out of the way. The pump will then pop right off. Just tuck your pump over out of the way a little bit so it's not getting in your way. Once you remove these, you unplug your unit, your motor, unplug the wire from it, it removes out of the way. You have two more clips, one on top, one on the bottom. Typically gonna be a quarter inch nut driver. You remove those, set those screws aside. Now the motor is held on by these clips still. Take your flat blade screwdriver and pry the bottom one off. Once the bottom one's pried off, you can now pry the top one off. Once they've been pried free, you can grab the motor and just tilt it till it comes out free and it'll come off into your lap. Okay, this is your broken drive coupling. You can see the pieces that are supposed to be mounted on the actual transmission have broken free, so it's not allowing it to do its job by holding it and spinning. You notice on the new one, it does have a metal sleeve in there. Same shape, same size, but needs uh, the metal sleeve just for the additional uh, strength. So what I'm gonna do is remove the one from the motor. This one popped right off some of them. You may have to pry free. If you have to pry it free, just use a screwdriver and kind of work it up. But once I've got it off, I can set my new one on there. It won't go all the way on. What I recommend using is a hammer of some sort. And what I use is a socket extension, something that's about the size of the metal ring. So you can set it on the metal ring and give yourself a couple good good uh, hits on your extension. And then you're back down on, you just wanna be at least flush with the shaft coming out of the motor. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing to the underside of the unit. What you're gonna see on the transmission is a shaft sticking out just like this one. You're gonna put this same plastic uh, gear on there as you did on the motor. It's just a little bit harder to see on camera because it is underneath the unit. So now we're gonna take the other half of the drive coupling um, and it's gonna slide on it. The, the shaft is slotted so it only goes on one, or, one way or the other. It's got a slot on each side. Once it sets in place, you do have to pound this one on. So what I'm gonna do is the same thing I just did on the motor. I'm gonna use my extension flat side down and I'm gonna pound it on until it's at least flush with the, with the shaft coming out of the transmission. Once you've got that pounded down back flash with the flush with the transmission, you're gonna reposition your motor. You are gonna make sure that off of the motor, 
There are little rubber boots that go between them. This one, one stuck up inside. I can pull it off there, slide it back on where it goes. What you're gonna wanna do is I would position one of your uh, teeth off your gear facing down, and then get your motor which way it's gonna line up to be, and now you wanna have one of them facing up. Do not forget your rubber boot. Your rubber boot, boot goes in between the two plastic pieces. You slide it in there. And what you're gonna do now is reposition your holes for your rubber boots as well as your three prongs for your transmission motor connection. Once you have them in spot in place, you're gonna define your notches for your clap to go back on. It does go in and then turns. Once it turns, you can then clamp it back on. If you do the top first, the bottom is easier because the motor is held up. If you don't do the bottom, the motor is going to keep falling on you. So once you have them in place, you put your two screws back in that came off of the clamps. Once you have that back in place, what you're gonna do now is put your pump back on. You're gonna have to align it because this has got uh, two uh, flat sides on the shaft as well, so you gotta make sure it aligns right. What you're gonna do is it's gonna come, it's gonna set in these four little notches for the feet to go into. If it sets down flush with the, with the actual motor, you've got the pump on all the way. You put your clips back on, remove, put them back on just the opposite of how you removed them. They push right over on. Once you got that back in place, you can plug your motor back in. Once your motor is plugged back in, you can put your case back on. And then plug the unit back in and you will have a functioning washing machine. Okay, with the bottom put together, what you're going to want to do is bring your case back in. It slides under the front lip and on top of the side lip, still going on the bottom base of the washing machine. Once you have it in position, it tilts back over and you need to plug your lid switch back in. You've got it back in position, you put your clip back on. Take and plug your lid switch back in. It comes back down, they slide it clamp, clamp back into place. You can plug your unit back in, advance it to spin cycle. The unit is now spinning. Now the unit's back working, we have to remember to put our screws back in the back of the unit so that the console is in place. And once you have the back screw back into place, you're going to slide your unit back to where you had it. Once you've got it to back to about where you've had it, this has self-leveling back legs. So you have to hold the front in place, grab your top console and pull it forward. You'll hear the back legs click, or you should. If you do, Set it back down, do it one more time. And that is just making it so the unit is now level. Thank you for watching another quality video brought to you by appliancevideo.com.